Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, I wanted to share with you one of my lessons with a new client, Sam Patrick, one of my YouTube subscribers who dropped in to the diary, come down, see what all of the fuss is about. A big thanks to him for letting me share today's session. He's just finished, delivered some really quite nice data. Just a cheeky little seven iron out there, 171 carry. I hope you enjoy the session. Lots to learn. Very good. I mean, if you're not, if you're not playing off of for single figures within 12 months, I'll be very surprised. Yeah. You've got, you've got a good little motion anyway. Yeah. After today, I would persuade you not to have too many lessons, whether with, it's with me oh, or mate, with anyone. Well, yeah. whoever, it, whoever it is, yeah. just, just have a few, because when, when I show you what's going on, yeah. you're really in a good place. And it's yeah. about how, how you can move that through the bag, yeah. because the changes we need to make aren't actually that, yeah. that big, but they'll, but they'll be pivotal yeah. in making your ball flight do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. Need, yeah. Go right or left, yeah, 100%. Very good. So what's happening at the moment is Trapman's taking the data, I'm taking some video analysis, and then uh, I'll pop it up on the screen, and then I'll talk you through it. Very impressive for only a year or so. Yeah, no, yeah. February. Right. So that's not going to February this year? No, no. February no, last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a year and a half. Yeah, well, that means it's very good. Very good. And and have you have you had lessons with? Trap man before. So the first one was the fourth one, so they had trap man there. Yeah. And then what is it, about six or something else? Yeah. But yeah, most of my, my, my majority of lessons were about anything. Yeah. So it's hard to gauge, isn't it? Yeah. You don't really know. And, and you've had a little bit of video analysis yeah, 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 on the phone or iPad? Yeah, I've got loads of videos. I'm making my I've got a gold thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Gold catalog. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you've hit. Uh, you've hit uh, seven shots with your, sorry, eight shots with your seven iron yeah. and seven shots with your nine iron. Yeah. So these are the shots with your nine iron. Yeah. If you've watched enough of my stuff, you, you'll appreciate that I really only ever have these four boxes yeah, up. That, yeah. So the angle of attack is how much we hit down. Yeah. Again, it has no rel relationship to how high the arms are or anything like that. Yeah. It's simply the scent angle of the club head yeah. to the ground. And that's 1.4 down. Now with the cuphead speed that you've got, mid 80s, which is great, you should be around three and a half to five and a half down for a mid trajectory flighted yeah. shot. Yeah. The lower we want to hit it, the more you need to hit down. Yeah. The higher you want to hit it, the less we hit down. Right. And so angle of attack, whilst it has a yeah. real big impact on contact, it also has an impact on the flight. But as a good frequency for someone of your club speed, yeah. three and a half to five and a half is great. Right. So we're a couple is of the across the board for all irons. Yeah, pretty much. And as you go as you go slightly longer in the iron, four irons and five irons, yeah. because the ball goes slightly further forwards, yeah. the angle of attack will slightly back off. Right. Yeah. But that being said, you should still be able to feel like you can hit down on it yeah. a long way, even though the ball is further forwards right. and, and understanding what that will do. Yeah. But through the irons, you're absolutely right. Between three and a half and five and a half yeah. is great. And as soon as you then start to get to like your three woods and your five woods off the floor, it's slightly come down again, balls even further forward. Yeah. So you tend to see it between half a degree, one degree down and three degrees down. 
it's not that you're necessarily changing that, it will just change because the ball is further forward. If you did the same thing and then you just move the ball further forward, you'd gradually get more of a, uh, less of a down strike. And, yeah. and as you go even further forward, more of an up strike. But that up strike is a different sensation because all of a sudden the club head is passing you through strike rather than following you through strike. Do you understand what I mean by that? So, so if, I was to, if I was to hit up on the golf ball, that club head would be passing the handle. If I was hitting down on the golf ball, that club head would be following the handle. So, to, so whilst we make the same swing, that swing there as I strike the iron, whilst it's the same motion, it will feel different to the driver that now feels like the club head swings past. And so that's the difference between hitting down and hitting up. But when people think about hitting up, they think about sitting yeah, back yeah. and hitting up. Well. Yeah, yeah, sit back. And unfortunately, when you start to then sit back and hit up, what happens is when you sit back, hit up, look where the face goes. Yeah, straight right. As a, a lot of their misses are out straight right. Yeah, not just straight just right. Straight right. Yeah. And so when you then think about that as a, as a motion, handle up, face right to hit up because you're thinking about striking up on the golf ball as opposed to now feeling that the way the club unloads through strike hits up on the golf ball, hits up on the golf ball. Now look how the face lines back up rather than thinking about hitting up. So it's two ways of feeling up and it's the lion's share of golfers that get into hitting up this way. And there are golfers in the world that do do that but there is a certain type of movement that allows that to work and it's just understanding. Yeah, they've got a few other ingredients. Yeah. So the angle of attack with your nine iron is a bit on the light side and it actually gets a bit worse with the seven iron. And that's why you hit the lion's share of your golf balls heavy if you're gonna miss strike it because the club is bottoming out too early. The path is pretty good on both counts. You're inside one degree and you're inside one degree so good path line. The trouble is, is that when you've got a good path line and a poor angle of attack, what we shouldn't see the ball do is go straight. Because if I improved your angle of attack, it would make the ball go further to the right. Now at the moment, the balls that you've hit have gone line share pretty straight. We've hit a little bit left, a little bit right. So when the ball's distribution is fairly straight, and the numbers aren't right. Whatever I change to make the numbers better, it will make the ball go offline. Right. So I need to actually make an adjustment yeah. in your technique, which will then allow the, the numbers to improve and to keep the golf ball straight. Right. So it's like a, a two-prong attack. Yeah. I can't just say, yeah. we're just gonna make your angle attack better. Well, I can make that happen yeah. immediately, yeah. but with the way you're standing to it, the way you're addressing it, if I did that, the ball would it's be worse. Absolutely, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Putting something in to take something away, if yeah. you like. And so, when we look on the on the far right hand side here, we're looking for an, for a face to path value that's negative. That's going to give us the draw ball yeah. flight. Now, a rough relationship is the every degree that I add on the angle of attack, yeah. it will make the club face one degree more open. So if I got you hitting down four degrees. Yeah. I would put on roughly two and a half to three degrees of attack angle, which would then make the club face more open to your path, which would then mean that you'd hit more down, but now you start hitting the ball to the right. So that's not gonna work, because if you hit a nice strike, you want it to go straight or still draw. And that's what I mean by I need to make a change somewhere to allow the angle of attack to start to develop. So the angle of attack and the face to path value are the two things that we are gonna try to address and get you hitting down and still keeping the draw, okay? So let's have a little look on the screen and see how we're gonna do that. So on the screen here, from the left-hand side of the screen, we're really not in too bad a shape. You may or may not know, but for me, I always like to see the spine angle as close to 90. Yeah, to the spine. And you're really not that far out there yeah. at all. I mean, you're, 
minimal, right? I mean, you're kind of that much. Yeah, please do. So a small amount out there. So all I would like to see us do is get a little bit deeper into the glute line. So you're going to feel like your glute line is going to get a little further back of your heel line. Yeah, so you're going to feel like you're going to sit back into your heels a touch more. And what that will then allow us to do is get you to tip slightly more forwards over the golf ball. What that allows us to do is to keep balance because when I draw a line up through the middles of your feet, what we're looking for is a much better balance between the top of the spine and the base of the spine relative to the center line. And so you can see at the moment, the gap between your forehead and the center line is far greater than the gap between your glute line and the center line. Yeah. Now, when you've got a golf club that's trying to pull itself in this direction, just do that. When it's trying to pull itself in that direction and you're already off balance, it's gonna cause the golfer to stand up and out of the shot because otherwise it will pull you onto your nose. Yeah. And that's why we see a lot of the time early extension, people talk yeah. about that. But it's really started before they've even got going. Yeah. And that's why I always very, very mindful that I need to get you standing right yeah. to start with. So that's what we're gonna do from down the line. From face on, as you'll know, I'm always looking for that left arm and that kink in there. Left hand is excellent. But what I'd like to see is the left arm and club shaft in one line at address. And, yeah, so it's a long way back. And so by allowing the left arm on the left hand to sit a little bit more in front of you, it will then get the left hip a little bit more towards the target. So at the moment, whenever you see someone cut the golf ball as a bad shot, you always tend to see their left shoulder a long way in front of their left hip at address. Granted, you have got rather large shoulders, <laughs> but we still want to get that left hip a little bit further forwards because your right hip is higher than your left hip address and your spine is too vertical. The more your, vert your spine is vertical at address, and if I go slightly more to the left, as I rotate, the club head will try to swing more outside in. And when you hit the ball to the right, that's an advantage because swinging more outside in will help you not hit it right. So that's kind of been, uh, been how you've developed that setup because of the hitting it to the right. Now you changed your grip just recently, made it a bit shorter, a bit stronger, and then you've got a bit more hip rotation. So that's obviously improved somewhat, but there's still a little bit more to do at address. Now what's probably gonna happen when I get you to do these changes, your angle of attack is going to disappear. It was bad before, it's probably going to get even worse. <laughs> but what you're going to be left with is a golf ball that now hooks more to the left. And at that point, when it starts to hook more to the left, now I can put the angle of attack back in and then it will pull it back straighter. Yeah. So to start with, we'll probably start hit it left and we'll probably have no angle of attack. All right? Yeah. So let me just put a new tag up here. And so by doing that, it allows us to measure the difference between where you were and where you are now. That's great. So if you set yourself up to that golf ball in your usual way, yeah. that's it, lovely. Good, perfect. So then we're going to get you a bit more sat back into your heels. Yeah. Hold it there but for me. That's what it's going to feel like to you. Yeah, yeah it, because you're well, quite biased on the toes well, of your feet. Yeah. So now push the club head behind the golf ball. That's great. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get your left hip a bit more in front of your left shoulder. Yeah. And then we're going to get the handle a bit more forwards. Yeah. Perfect. Love. Excellent. Super. Hold it there for me. It feels like cricket, right? Super. Hold it there for me. One second. And away you go for me. Yeah, go for it. It's all right? It's all good? No problem at all. No problem at all. No problem at all. All feels a bit strange to start with, with the old setup. That's great. Perfect. 
Super. Lovely, and away you go. It's all good, it's all good. So at the moment, you're catching the golf ball out the toe of the golf club. Perfect there, hold it there for me. One second. So now what I want you to do is make a practice, no, stay where you were, make a practice swing and just hit the mat anywhere over here for me, just outside of that golf ball. Very good, and again. Super. Now let's roll that ball back into where it was normally. Lovely stuff. Good. Perfect. Lovely stuff. Good. So all we did, because we adjusted your setup, all of a sudden the club's coming from a different location, yeah. you're in a different spot and it all feels a little bit weird and that's why you couldn't quite find the face. That's yeah. fine, so then all I did, I moved the ball where the club was returning. It was returning too close to you because that's what you kind of used to and also because of the, what you tried to work on before, that inside out path, it just encouraged you to hit it out the toe. Yeah. Then we gave you a couple of practice swings and you found centre yeah. again and you can see that the angle... Yeah, the angle of attack has disappeared yeah. and now the face has gone even more close yeah. to the path. Great. And again for me. Is that, is that grip strong enough there? Yeah, no. Yep, perfect. But just put, when you push the handle forwards, it will just help you get it a little bit stronger. I would put the handle first and then put the grip on. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Hold it there for me. Good. Super. Good. One second. Hold it there for me. Lovely stuff. One second. Good. And away you go. Good job. Good job. Lovely. Left hip a bit further forwards for me. Very good. Super. And away you go. So again, you can see just out of the toe. Yeah. All of these, all of this movement here is all a byproduct of the inside yeah. motion that you've made. Don't stress yourself out the fact that you're not hitting it very well. Yeah. All I'm interested in is you getting comfortable yeah. with that yeah. setup. Yeah. You yeah. won't leave here hitting it like that, yeah. I absolutely promise you. Yeah. And everyone reacts different. Mm. Sometimes you get someone that will just, just rip it straight yeah, out the bat. Sure. Yeah. Some people find it a little more tricky just to start with. That's great, super. So left hip a little further forwards, that's great. And just come a fraction closer to the golf ball and then pop yourself back into your heels again there. Great stuff, good, super. So what we're gonna do, just gonna make another practice swing. And I want you to hit the mat outside of that golf ball. Good, and again. Super, now set yourself up to the ball. Hold it there, that's lovely there. <laughs> well done. Let's see if it works. Good. Lovely stuff. Okay, where you go. Good job, good job. So there's that heavy strike again. Yeah. And again, we can now see the club path still, still from the inside, but the biggie, which is what we said at the start, you see how the angle of attack, yeah. you're now hitting up on it. Uh, yeah. Hitting up on it, yeah. Good, and again for me. Super, super, excellent, and away you go. 
Warte. Warte. So if we take a little look on the screen here, and I'll just show you the difference between two setups. <laughs> so all of a sudden, we've got the relationship between the spine and the club shaft nicely at 90. Yeah. Then when I draw a line up through the middles of your feet, we've now got a much better distribution. Now look, everyone's got slightly longer arms or slightly longer torsos and legs, but really what I'm looking for is a, is a pelvis that sits back of the center line. And so the two points, the pelvis and the shoulder, are the two hinge points yeah hinge of the, of the torso, hinge of the arm. We need those two power points, if you like, either side of the, of the balance line. If they're too close or too much to the right of it, as I say, we're starting to get a little bit out of, out of whack there. Then, then face on, now we're able to see how the left hip is now in line. With the, it feels like you're playing cricket. <laughs> A absolutely, and, 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 that's, and that's the point, you know, I was in my, my resistance to do YouTube was giving this stuff away, but the reality is, you've watched enough of my videos, you know what I like, yeah. and yet you still weren't able to necessarily apply it, and I think that's the, you, people just don't push themselves quite far of course enough, not, no. and that, that's the, that's no, the tricky, you're doing something. yeah, you're not at all, no, you been there back to something else. <laughs> it's nowhere near it, yeah. yeah. And of course, you just wouldn't go that far. But, but now all of a sudden, when you stand there, now you look like someone that is about to play the game for a living rather than so, someone that is, yeah, a weekend golfer, right? Now we look like a tour player. And whilst that sounds a bit superficial, we are trying to, and I do the, the deadlift analogy. If you were a, a, an Olympic deadlifter in the gym, or you were a rank amateur for the very first time, you would have exactly the same course, technique, wouldn't yeah. you? Because you're loading the structure. Yeah. You're gonna load the structure. You're adhering to the same pressures, the same forces as every human on the planet. Sure, people have slightly stronger backs, stronger yeah, arms, yeah. but that's the mobility side of it is what really differentiates yeah. people. The fact that we're all adhering to the same pressures, we're still having to adhere to the physics of the two colliding matters, the club and the ball. It really applies to us all. So let's go one more shot like that, and I'm going to show you something else. That's really good, really good. Well done. Yep, super. Good job, good job. So let's get rid of the fat strike. Because <laughs> that, that, yeah, that, that, that won't play out too well for too long. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, and this is what I mean by, you know, you're, you're not too far out and you have a golf swing that a lot of people go, oh, that looks quite nice, but it doesn't quite perform yeah. to, to the what. And I think that's where you've come a cropper with, with maybe lessons in that if you're not using Trackman uh, and, and a coach doesn't quite see the, the, the symptoms that are going on underneath, and they see the ball hook, let's say, they'll just try and push the path right. The, the issue here is the angle of attack, because now I've got the grip and everything set up right. We can see as you swing through here on the, on the, on the screen, we're able to see at the point of strike, your arms are caving in, aren't they? The, the arms have pulled in, yeah. and that club head at the point of strike has overtaken the handle, hasn't it? And so at that point, the width of the golf swing, the width of the club head, you've completely unloaded it at this point back here, pre-strike. And so if you didn't pull your arms in, you wouldn't, you, you would get the ball, but you'd take three foot of dirt turf before it. So if you didn't pull your arms in, you wouldn't be able to accommodate that early extension. 
Now that early extension or that casting as people call it was all because the face was open and hitting the ball to the right with the weaker hold and, and yeah. where you've experienced it going to the right. Now we've got a grip that now gives you more club face, yeah. i.e. eight degrees shut to your path. Now I can start to put in a bit more angle of attack. So what we're going to get you to do is, yeah. So, so at the top of our backswing, what we want to see is a left hip on top of left ankle. When the left hip is on top of left ankle, the left foot has then got more force that it can push up with. And when you push up, the golfer certainly wouldn't want to pull in as well. Now you've, yeah, now you've got two opposing forces. So when you've got pressure up, you can then apply pressure down. So what we're going to get you to do so what we're going to get you to do is pop the ball on your bum. Yeah. I'm going to take the TheraBand through the tops of your hands, wrap it around your neck, push the band underneath us, yeah. and so it's pushing off of your posture. And what we're going to get you to do is make a backswing. As you make a backswing, you're going to roll the Swiss ball towards the target. And then when you get to the top of the backswing here, you're going to keep the pressure of the TheraBand underneath you. I'm not interested in long backswings. Yeah. All I'm interested in is you feeling the pressure of the TheraBand. And then as you move through, as you push the left leg up, which will roll the, the Swiss ball back to my golf bag, I'm going to get you to push down on the TheraBand and move it around and back in. So it will look like this. You're going to push down, roll the Swiss ball to the, tar to the target, and then roll it away from the target. Come over, go. Good. Yes. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Regular gym goer? Yeah, I'll, I'll go for phases. I'll go for the on straight and then I won't go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's, yeah, I'll try, I'll try to be. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're going to go. Months, so we're going to go hands together oh. like that. That's it. Perfect. Good. So now you can see the relevance of pushing the pressure underneath. Yeah the chest so if you were pushing a float under the water yeah. that's what it would feel like yeah. right yeah. so now roll the swiss ball to the left as you go into your backswing that's great keep going and you keep the pressure on the swiss up uh, on the theraband yeah. that's it lovely and so at this point here you're going to feel like there's load hold it there yeah. there's load into your left leg yeah. now now that pressure in that left leg is going to roll the swiss ball away from the target keep going keep going Keep going, hold it there, perfect. And then you can still keep the pressure yeah. here. And now the pressure feels like it's back in your right lovely. foot. Yeah, lovely, perfect, good, super. That's it. And then roll it back the other way. Lovely. And again for me. Yeah. Super. So now what I want you to do is do that exact same thing with the golf club. That, yeah. Yep. Lovely stuff. Great. Oh, yeah. yeah, perfect. So as you go back, hold it there. Good. So we just go slightly shorter. Pressure on the TheraBand. That's good. And then Swiss ball a bit more that way. That's it. Good. Lovely. Good. Now as you pull the golf club, push the Swiss ball back stretch the TheraBand. Perfect, good. Now what we want you to do is to stretch the TheraBand yeah. so that the club can get the floor. Right. Yeah? yeah? A bit more towards the target. No, not rolling on the ball, just more pressure into your left leg. That's it, perfect, good. And then pull the club down. Good. Yeah, keep going. Lovely. Hold it there. So you can keep the pressure on the TheraBand yeah. and the club can still swing. Yeah. We don't need to hold it. No, yeah? I'm not holding that much. Yeah. yeah, so you're just holding the angle. Yeah. The angle, yeah. The, the, the cast, the way we get rid of the cast, is simply the pull yeah. and the pressure on the handle. Right. It's got nothing to do with holding the angle, leaning yeah. the shaft forwards. Yeah. If you just stay there, if I was to get you to push the TheraBand to the floor, yeah. Can you put now now flex the theraband or, or or lighten the load of the theraband and bend your arms? 
Yeah, now yeah. push the TheraBand down. Can you appreciate how? Yeah, I'll run a push it down. Raise the club out. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you go to the top of your backswing, yeah, so go back to the start for me. Go back to, to the oh, top sorry. of your backswing. That's all right. That's all right. Hold it there. That's great. So now as you move down slowly, pulling the golf club. Yeah, hold it there. That's it. Great. Hold it there for me. So at that point, because you're pushing on the TheraBand, that keeps the, the club head up. Yeah. And at that point, you're pushing up through your left leg. Push up. That's it. Good. Come back to the start. So just push up with your left leg, but don't roll the Swiss ball. Stop there. Good, super. Now pull the goal, keep the pressure on the band yeah. and just pull the club out my hands. Go. Perfect. And so that push yeah. and pull, yeah. there's the push, there's the pull. Yeah. Both of those two motions will make the lever work appropriately. Right. Yeah. And as long as you're using your feet, yeah. that will now pull you around the ball. So you pull it, You've got force on the TheraBand, and then you use your leg action to move it around. There we go, super. Just all the, it's not just to, not, just not to uh, impact, you just keep on pulling it. And you allow the club to feel like it can just swing through strike, like it would do as a, as a lever. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Now push more pressure on the TheraBand on the way through. Lovely. Excellent. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Now come back on the mat for me. We take you up to the top. Now as you move the golf club down, Already before you've even got to the ball, can you see on the left-hand side how your arms are starting to buckle in? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So if you're pulling your arms in, the club head has to widen out to accommodate the gap. So the pressure on the TheraBand suddenly starts to keep pressure out in that direction, which keeps the club head back in this direction. Absolutely. And then when you start to see the club move through here compared to what it now does through here yeah. you can see how it's actually too much the other way yeah. but that's purely because of the pressure and the pull yeah. and so at that point the golf club then swings so can you see how at this point here so we went from lots of angle to no angle now that no angle should occur around this area here. Right. It's just that because in your mind you're yeah. thinking about having more angle through the ball, held on to it a little yeah. bit, but the reality is if I bore the golf club, the reality is if I'm applying force on the handle and then I'm pulling the handle, you can see that the golf club will load. Yeah. Now if your lower half doesn't spin you around because you don't use your feet right, your pelvis gets locked out and you then just whip the head over. And so that's why the, the start point for most golfers is making sure that their feet start to behave. Now because of the way you move and how good you are, I want to give you a bit more because if you, if you can get the sense of how the pressure on the TheraBand works and then you can sense how your feet move that around you, you'll really start to yeah. you go to a different stratosphere oh, with your goal. So, yeah. so yeah. let's see you back on the mat there yeah. for me. So I'm going to get you into your backswing and stop. Good. Back and stop. Yeah, so you're oh, going to go. No, yeah. no, you're all good. Yeah. No, you're all good. Oh, into yeah. your backswing and stop for me. That's good. Hold it there. So at that point, yeah. if you have more pressure in your left leg, it now feels like you've got something to push up yeah, from, up, yeah. which then makes you feel like as you push up, you can then pull the handle down. 
Yeah. yeah, and we're allowing the head weight to feel like it can swing. So up to the top. Good, so pull, away you go. Yep, absolutely, absolutely, and again. To the top, pressure into the left leg, and pull. Super, excellent. So, if we now get you set up just here for me. Yeah. Lovely, now make a back swing and stop. Now pull the club and hit the ground after. Yeah, super, super, super. Yeah, yeah. Try and hit the ground left of the goal, uh, left of that plate for me. Left hip a touch more forwards. There we go. Super stuff. Okay. Back and stop. And then pull. Lovely. Really good. Really good. Excellent. So. <laughs> That's all right. So, so, so to miss, the reason why you're missing the ground, and you'll see in a moment, is because you've now created more angle between the levers. Remember, when, let me just show you this on the screen here. Narrow up the arc on the way down. So at the moment, at this point here, when your left arm, when your left hand, back of your left hand is on the outside of your right leg, and then, the back of your left hand is outside your yeah. right leg. Look at how much higher the club head is to the floor. One is at the height of your ankle, <laughs> and one is at the height of your shoulder. Yeah. So if you don't push force onto the TheraBand, yeah. you, through strike, you won't meet the floor anymore. But what you're used to doing yeah. is pushing force out on the club head. Now you did that part and parcel because you, when you hit the ball to the right, if you didn't push the head, the face would be left open. Yeah. Whereas now I've made the ball go left, the feeling on the right, would actually appease that problem going to the left. And so I just create an environment that an angle of attack going left, I then show a goal for how to use his levers better because it then pulls the ball straight. They go, well, I'll do that. Yeah. The strike might be in and out, but when you strike it, it will then go straight. Yeah. And when you then start to look at how you interact at impact, look at the difference My with the shot. <laughs> It's Crazy. super simple, super yeah. simple. Now there's other stuff to change there, but, but the, the, the lion's share of the issues that is gonna cause you to fat it and, and not be fun on the golf course is, is remedied here, very different impact conditions. So let's see you with a golf ball. We have a couple more practice swings, yeah. in fact, a couple more practice swings. But now if it goes to range, and no one can catch it. Absolutely. Before, it's like, so much yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. So what we're looking for is to roll the Swiss ball into your left leg, and then you're gonna pull the club. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Hit the floor by pushing the handle down. So stay where you are. Push into me, push into my hand. That's the feeling to hit the floor. and immediately you get the floor. Yeah, man, it's crazy, yeah. That's all good. So. Good, so handle in front. Good, so put pressure into that left leg on the way back. Away you go. Good effort, good effort. So immediately, We've now got one degree of downstrike. Look, there's still more there, yeah. but all of a sudden, we've now taken the attack angle from being positive yeah. to more down. Yeah. And the more you do that, the more it will keep going down. Yeah. And again.
Beautiful. Beautiful. So you were 3.6 down yeah. and one degree from the inside. Right. Same again. Excellent. Good. Are you making it stronger? Yeah, yeah. that's what you're doing, yeah. yeah. So that crease there yeah. needs to sit down the top of the thumb right. rather than over there. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Super. Hold it there for me. One second. Very good. One second. Okay. Away you go. Good job. Good job. Excellent. Honestly, if you're not playing off of single figures, I'm sacked. You're not sacked, I'm sacked. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah? Yep, right hand just a touch more under. A yeah, 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 perfect. Yep, perfect, perfect. Pressure into the left leg. Yeah, nice. Nice. So 3.8 down, 3.6. now. The fact that you've worked on pushing the handle out to the right yeah. is Mate, part of literally in the brains. Yeah, like yeah. Doing that. Do you know what I mean? Constantly. <laughs> and, and that's why we can see on the screen yeah, yeah. your left shoulder trying to tuck itself in your left ear. Right, yeah. Yeah? So because, because you've worked on inside out. Yeah. Right now, I just want you to focus on what we've talked about yeah, today. Yeah. But but after you've done a few of those, watch yeah. my broom drill video. Have you yeah. seen that? I've seen a few of them, yeah. Right, so yeah. watch the first one. Yeah. That, and, and, and the first and the second one, because that talks about setup, um, talks about impact and yeah. through swing. Yeah. They'll be huge for us. Yeah. But I really want you to focus on what we've talked about it's today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, a, have another so go. <laughs> yeah, in the excitement of hitting better shots, right? That's right, that's right. So as much as it was thin, it was still 1.8 down. Hold it there for me. Good, lovely. There. Just go to the top of your backswing and stop for me. Into your left leg more. More? Yep, good. Back to the start. Away you go. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Amazing. So, we're now 4.6 down from the inside at 5.6, and we've now got a face to path that's negative. Let me show you what we've done. So this is the part of the session where I do a video recap of everything we've done. Yeah. I email it to you, and then you've got it as a, a resource to build your practice around. So the left was the old impact condition. On the right hand side is the new one. So at the point of contact, <clears throat> we can now see how the left hand, the back of the left hand, is now far further forwards. And as we back it up, just look at the arm structure, how we're getting a little bit more pressure and we're getting a little bit more angle. That's just gonna keep getting better and better and we can see that the angle of attack has obviously changed. So the drill that we did to encourage this. I hope you enjoyed that session. I know Sam walked away feeling quite upbeat about his game and hopefully he's got some insights in to what he needs to change and work on. I'll be sending over his video recap imminently. 60% of you who are watching this video are not subscribed. Do me a favor, do hit the subscribe button because you want to miss out on some good coaching. See you next time.